In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the different types of plate margins. But before we get started, I just want to recap our last lesson with the theory of plate tectonics. And we have on screen here a map outlining the different plates that makes up Earth, right? So we have here, we have, this map is a little bit confusing, but if you look closely, we have North America in this region. So this plate that you see here outlined, this entire thing here, that I'm circling with the red, is the North American plate. And it's important for you to know these boundaries because the um, exam could come in a sense that you have a blank map and you're required to label the boundaries. So this is the North American plate and it expands to part of Eurasia, maybe places where Mongolia is right now. We also have the Caribbean plate, which is this little green section here, comprising of the Caribbean and part of Central America. We have here now the South American plate that I'm bungling in blue, right? Part of the South American plate makes up the Scotia plate, but it's not really a recommendation to learn that plate. We just recently label it that way, but for CXC purposes and for Caribbean, Geography purposes from form one to form five, they don't identify Scotia plate. The main plates are the North American plates, the Caribbean plates on the green, and the South American plates in the blue. We also have the Nazca plate. This is a plate we also need to learn. Right? Opposite the Nazca plate has the Cocos plate, and this is right here. Right, the cocoa's plate. And this whole piece here is the fill, um, Pacific plate. And the Pacific plate can, is not broken up really, but one big slab or plate is divided into the Pacific plate, the cocoa's plate, the one day Fuka plate, and the Philippine plate. The Philippine plate is actually this little piece here, right? So we establish the South American plate. And I'll continue establishing that by drawing. Continue, right, so this is the South American plate. And right next to the South American plate, we have the Philippine plate, right? And then we have the Eurasian plate on the right of um, North America which consists of Europe, Asia, all those European countries, Russia, et cetera. And it ends at the very tip or close to the tip of the American plate on the other side, right? So this is the, um, the Eurasian plate. So if the earth was wrong, well, it is wrong, but if this map was wrong, then you will see that the Eurasian plate bombs with America North American plate, and it's basically this, right? So on the right side, it starts with Europe and it ends with Mongolia and the Asian countries on the left of North America. Then we have the Arabian plate, which is this little piece here, right? And the Arabian plate merges with the Eurasian plate and the African plate. And the African plate is this piece right here that is right over Africa, right? Sorry, this piece right here. So this big piece right here is the African plate. So the African plate is connected to the Caribbean plate, as you can see here, the South American plate, as you can see here, the Eurasian plate and the Australian plate at the bottom and the Indian plate to the side. So the Indian plate now is this piece right here Right, and the Australian plate is the part that covers um, Australia, right below Africa, and I'll put that in brown. And this is it here. It's right here. It starts here. Remember, the earth is wrong. So if we connect the two edges, it will continue. So this is the Australian plate. Low at the bottom here now, we have the Antarctic plate, which is this whole area coming down on this side here. So let's. 
Let's highlight that, right? So we'll highlight it with a different color. The Antarctic plate spans this entire region at the bottom here. So these are the different plate boundaries. So we know what are the different plate boundaries, but this lesson is basically teaching us the different types of plate boundaries. So there are three types you're gonna look at. They are constructive, destructive, and passive or transform. Right, and all these plate margins, the boundaries, meaning the lines between different plates. So let's say this little area right here that I'm highlighting, this is a margin or a plate boundary. And it could either be a tectonic divergent plate, passive plate, or a destructive plate. And when we get involved with the different types of plates, these little black arrows will make much more sense to you right now. So where the Nazca plate and the South American plate meet, they, you're seeing two arrows towards each other. This is a destructive plate boundary. Where we have the Pacific plate and the Nazca plate, they are moving away from each other, so they're passive. And where we have two plates, Sorry, moving away from each other, meaning they are constructive and two plates are slide past each other, are transformed. So let's get started with this. So the theory of continental drift, remember we talked about this last day? So the theory of plate tectonics starts with another idea, continental drift, that the Earth was one single large landmass called Pangaea that once broken up into small pieces and drifted away to become the continents that we know today, right? So they just had forces and these um, plates drifting, but we know that forces could either be, is a theory right now, and, it, it, and they always placed it with the internal section of the Earth, which is literally hot and convection currents. So evidence that support continental drift is the identical types of fossils found in Africa and South America. So this is South America here, as you can see. So this part here is South America. I just wanna change this color. It's South America. And this side here, Africa. Right, and where these two plates meet, it, it looks as if they fit in a jigsaw, right? So the fossils found in Africa and South America are that of the same species of animals, right? Nowhere on earth does these animals exist besides South America and Africa. Continents can piece together, so it looks like a puzzle that we could just fit directly, like a jigsaw puzzle. And glacial deposits left by same sheet of ice. So long ago when we had the Ice Age, the ice deposits that were left indicated that it was the same sheet of ice that covered them both. So it gets interesting. Plate tectonics could really help us understand how the Earth is in terms. The continents are said to be moving because of the other theory that we mentioned last day, which is seafloor spreading. And running down the middle of the ocean, a long mountain chain with valleys in the middle called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. And I specified to you last day where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is. It's directly between North America and Europe, right? That piece of land. Lava erupts from the center of the valley and pushes the ocean floor away from the other side. So this is the diagram here. We have, I'll explain it to you. We have South America here or America, and then we have Africa. So this is just part. The oceanic ridge runs from North America to South America on a vertical basis. So it covers places the same length of Europe to the tip of Africa. And it's basically a mountain range in deep sea in the middle of the ocean underneath the, in the sea floor. And because current and convection happen below the Earth's surface, in this area, it forces, it forces magma to go up to this direction that I'm pointing. And when it do so, it causes the, the plate to push this way and one plate will push the other way. 
and by this they come out and new material is deposited on the seafloor. When this material solidifies, it forms rocks, right? And when we test the age of the rocks, the newer rocks tend to be at the beginning of the ridge and the older rocks span outwards. So the oldest rock will be the, 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 the most outward rock then, as indicated in the diagram. And the youngest rock will be closer to the ridge. So we're moving on now. More evidence. So rocks are younger by the mid-ocean ridge than farther away. Magnetic strip match up on either side of the ridges as the poles reverse themselves. So here we have the diagram of the ridge and you can see it. So this is the ridge here, this black line running down here and this is where the magma, magma comes up, right? And the magnetic field or the it is reversed by magnetic polarity, right? So because of this, they tend to show that their evidence that they all were once one then. Okay, so moving on. Why doesn't the earth keep getting bigger? So the reason why you, you might be thinking when the earth spreading out in one place, how come the land mass is not drifting further apart? And how come the um, the country is not getting closer or further away or the land mass not growing or the earth not getting bigger in size if new material keep coming up. The reason for this is where one part emerge lava and spread the seafloor and they pull the two plate pull apart, in the very end, we have what is called a subduction zone. And a subduction zone is when two plates moving together like so, right? We have two plates and they are moving together towards each other, right? They tend to crash. And because they crash together, the more denser plate will remain underneath and the, the, the lighter plate will remain at the top, right? So the denser plate, which is this plate here, will crash into this plate coming in here, and it will subduct into this part. When it subducts, because of the heat in the mantle and the core, it causes the crust to melt, right? It becomes magma once again. And then it can lead to possible volcanoes forming at this end and the continental crust, right? The volcano will always grow the continental crust because the lava will be ejected onto the surface and solidify as a new layer of land, right? So remember, before we talk about the, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the seafloor spreading, but remember the earth is not getting bigger, right? The earth cannot grow bigger than what it is. It is a planet, okay? But where the earth surface spreads by tectonic plates moving away from each other, in one end, there's always a subduction zone where part, where part crunches and into another one and subducts, right? So where one is being created, another is being destroyed. So we tend to keep a balance in the plates. Okay, and subduction zone is very important. The terra plate tectonics explain the formation, movement, collision, and destruction of the Earth's crust. So the major areas of seafloor spreading I'll show you here now. So this area here, right here, we have North America, and then we have the Con and South America, and then we have Europe and Africa. This line at the center here that I'm dotting out in red is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here is where the seafloor spreads. Below Africa and Southwest, close to Australia, we have the South Indian, Southwest Indian Ridge, and in part of Africa, coming down, and between India and Africa by the Sahara Desert and all these Middle Eastern countries, we have the Central Indian Range, and the, sea floor is all, the floor is also spreading there. 
Now it's very unique that we have the seafloor spreading close and into land as well. What, what is happening here, there are big rift valleys being formed on land. So where we have trenches and ridges in the sea, we have rift valleys on land, which shows the separation, right? And we also, also have areas like that where volcanoes are present and the magma is ejected from there. At the end where, the, where California is in America, we have the East Pacific, rise and the Pacific Antarctic Ridge and the Indian Antarctic Ridge forming. And this is also where the seafloor spreads, okay? Remember that part of California, right, which is to the west of America, receives severe earthquakes and this is why. The reason for this is because they, they lie on a plate margin. So every time the plate pull and move, contract, etc. they're going to feel the shape. And as a result, they get some deadly earthquakes happening there. And that is called San Andreas Fault. Okay, San Andreas Fault is where cities such as San Francisco, part of California, etc. is located on. And if you do your research, you'll find out that they get some really bad earthquakes, right? And the earthquake cause a lot of the structure and the only reason for that is because they are located next to where the floor is spreading. How do plates move? One hypothesis is that large convection currents within the mantle move plates. Movement is caused by differences in temperature causing a rising and sinking cycle. So let, let's look at the diagram to decide. We have here the earth's crust on top. Right, we have a trench, we have a ridge, like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and we have another trench. <clears throat> the reason why we call it trench is because here's where the subduction zones happen. The, the land, the dense land will be submerged below the, the less dense land or the less dense plate. And these areas from here to here are subduction zones. So they are by trends, trenches. The middle here is ridge, and this is where the new material comes up and the seafloor spreads, and where the trenches are is where the subduction zone is, and the older land or the older material that were brought up years and years ago are destroyed. Now, this don't happen at a rate that we can see with the visible eye. It happens a couple inches per year, okay? So it's not really that, that, um, that, Severe to say, well, you know, it could mash up one day or we can't move or travel one day or whatnot. That, that is why they always bring us back to the theory that the earth could come back to being one in the next 200 million years, right? So basically, you remember the inner core and the outer core is iron, right? Is, is, is hard, hot iron, basically. The heat now in the mantle form convection currents, as you can see here. The convection current move, right? And then they move up, like how the heat works when you cover a pot. And because of that, it causes something to boil. And the plates by that now shifts and moves, right? Movement is caused by the differences in temperature causing a rising and sinking cycle. So the rising cycle is where the material ejects from the ridges. And the sinking cycle is where they meet at, where two plates meet at subduction zones and the less dense plate pull underneath the lighter plate forming by a trench, right? The subduction zones is where the plates are destroyed. The lithosphere, which is basically the level where we live in, the land area, is divided into seven major plates, and we went through these plates. The North American plate, South American plate, Caribbean plate, Nazca plate, Cocos plate. We have the Pacific plate, the Eurasian plate, the Arabian plate, African plate, Indian Australian plate, the Pacific plate, and the Philippine plate. We went through these plates earlier, right? So again, the very important thing to note is where they are located. Moving on. 
So now that's, this takes us now to our three types of plate boundaries. So we'll begin by looking at divergent plate boundaries. And divergent plate boundaries occur where plates move apart. There are two types of divergent con or constructive boundaries that have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Rift Valleys. Okay, so where we have Rift Valleys means the seafloor is pulling away from each other and spreading. So this is what an example of what it looks like here in this little sketch picture. This is the ocean we would row our boats and pass with our steamships and so forth. But below this deep ocean, and it's not that sh it's not shallow like how the picture up is actually miles and miles deep, right? This is actually where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is, and this is where the Titanic sank, if you know the history about it. So the ocean is not really ankle height water, just to express it, right? It's actually deep, deep, deep water where trenches are located, et cetera. So you go down into miles, right? So this whole area here with all this magma coming up, we don't even feel it. We have to go, it have parts of the ocean humans can't even reach because of the depth, okay? But they have special technology that they would send down and they will find all these things for us. So here we have, the sea floor at the very top. And we can call here America, North America, and let's call here Africa. Let's pretend here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and it's shortened by Mid-Ridge, right? Let's say North America, Africa, and the Mid-Ridge. This is where the mountain chain is, right? Underwater. So the land is a bit higher here. So here is where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge here is so the, these the two plates are pulling away from each other like this and plates that move away from each other are known as divergent or constructive plate boundary and where they pull apart from each other the magma rises and comes to the surface okay so this is was my diagrammatical explanation i can draw it out here for you as well let's switch screens and go to the whiteboard so when we talk about plate boundaries, we can talk about two plates, one plate, two plates, right? So let's say these are two plates and they are moving away from each other. So it goes in this diagram, in this direction. So this diagram is the easiest thing we could look at and draw in an exam. Sometimes we just want to know what is a divergent plate boundary. And we can see a divergent plate boundary is one where two plates pull away from each other. Very simple as that. And let's write it. So you'll know as it could get a very simple in the exam, right? So a divergent plate boundary is one where two plates pull away from each other, creating a rift valley or a ridge. Example, where the North American plate pulls away from the Eurasian and African plate, we have a divergent zone where the sea floor spreads and the mid Atlantic ridge is present, right? So this is very simple notes and I would like you to pause and take it. I would like you to pause and take all the notes. But for this particular thing, it's very simple. And you obviously have a heading, divergent plate boundary. So divergent plate boundary is one where two plates pull away from each other, creating a rift valley or a ridge. An example of this is the North American plate pulling away from the Eurasian and African plate. We have 
a divergent zone where the seafloor spreads and the mid-Atlantic ridge is present. Okay, so let's switch back now to our lecture. So remember to pause the video and take that piece of note down. Now we're talking about the mid-Atlantic or the mid-ocean ridge that I've been preaching all the time, right? And here we have a diagram or a picture where it starts from South North America and it comes down, down in between South America and Africa, right? So it's a very long ridge. And the new ocean floor mountains, earthquakes and volcanic action occur when an ocean ridge spread apart. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is one of the largest mountain ranges in the world. Imagine it span from the top of North America to the bottom of South America. That is pretty long, right? So let's continue. Now we're moving on. So what is a rift valley? And a rift valley is where continents start to split apart, forming a rift valley and eventually a seaway and then an ocean. So that part between where we talk about the ridge bit by the Middle East out into the ocean of Africa, the African rift valley, the land will split, creating a rift valley. So when the earth pull apart, it creates faulting, and then it goes deeper to form a valley, and then it goes deeper to open up into a seaway. And then when it opens up widely, it will eventually be an ocean area. And this will continue to pull apart millions of years to come, and maybe in 200 million years, a sea will develop where part of the Middle East and Africa and between India there, they will now have an ocean, right? So that's nothing for me to look forward to, but maybe our um, generations to come. So now we move on to convergent plate boundaries and convergent plate boundaries are also called destructive plate boundaries. And this is where two plates crash into each other and create the subduction zone we've been speaking about all the time, right? We could have two continental plates hitting towards each other. We can have the ocean plates coming towards each other and then we can have an ocean, oceanic plate and a continental plate crashing into each other. Obviously, the denser plate will be the oceanic plate and because the landmass were always floating on top of it, and the continental plate will be the one to remain on top. So the oceanic plate, as the diagram suggests, will crash into the continental plate and slip downwards, okay? Into the subduction zone. So let's go back to the whiteboard now and take a quick note for this. Let's clear it. So, when we talk now about the structure plate margin, we see we have two plates. And again, this is the easiest representation we can have, use rectangles, right? We have them crashing into each other. So two plates coming at each other. So let's take notes for this now. So we have here, Convergent or destructive plate boundary. So at this plate boundary, two plates, whether it be both ocean both land or a or an ocean or continental plate move towards each other. This creates a crash and the less the more denser plate Subducts 
below the less tensor plane. Okay, so an example of this is where we have those volcanic, a lot of volcanic activities taking place, right? So remember, at those destructive plate boundaries, a lot is happening. At these boundaries, we feel our most earthquakes, we have volcanoes, we have a lot of disasters coming out of these boundaries. And the structure plate boundaries is where the new crust, the old crust that was formed from the ridges that we speak about just now, at the structure plate boundaries is where they are destroyed. The older crust is destroyed. Okay, because remember, the earth cannot grow in size. So where the sea floor spreads, it must destroy at one point, and the oldest rock will be destroyed. Okay. So an example now of a destructive plate boundary. This will be where the Nazca plate pushes under the South American plate. Okay, so remember if you don't, if in any exam, if they ask you what is a plate boundary or different type of plate boundary, you tell them and always give an example and a little sketch to earn your points. Okay? So let's go back now. So pause your video and take these notes and let's go back to the lecture. Where we have continent to continent, where mountains are formed and earthquakes occur where continental plates run into each other. For example, where the Himalayas is on the Alps. So the summit of Mount Everest is made of marine limestone. So imagine the top of Mount Everest is limestone, marine limestone. So this just to show us that these plates push and push the land upward to create mountainous ridges. Where ocean to ocean plates meet, we have volcanic island arcs and trenches and earthquakes occur. The plates are ducked under a younger ocean plate. For example, Japan and the Aleutian Islands off Alaska, the Philippines, Tonga Islands, and the Marianas Trench, which is the deepest trench on Earth, are all in areas where two ocean plates meet at a subduction zone, right? We'll get on to hotspots after, and we'll explain to you how hotspot islands are formed. Where we have ocean plates and continental plates, we have mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes occurring. And the ocean plate subducts under the continental plate because the oceanic plate is actually denser than the continental plate. Because it is a heavier one, it sinks. The oceanic plate melts, Less dense magma rises to form volcanoes, for example, the Andes, the Cascade Range, and the Sierra Nevada. Okay? So this is what happens when we have ocean plate to continental plate. So now we move on to our last type of plate boundaries, which is transform plate boundaries. And this is when two plates slide alongside each other and earthquakes do occur in these areas. Example, the San Andreas Fault in California. So this is where the San Andreas Fault is. Look, look at this picture right here on the screen, right here. Good. This is the San Andreas Fault. A fault is like a big crack on the Earth's surface, but the plate now on the San Andreas Fault is not pulling away from each other. No seafloor is spreading here. Rather, they are sliding past each other. So where one plate move up, one plate comes down. And it creates a dragging effect, which creates friction, right? This is the cause of, Cal of California's most deadliest earthquakes that happened in the past, right? Because San Andreas Fault is directly over California, okay? And it, there's evidence on land to show how they, they, they move. There are scientists who would record two points, mark these two points, and years, 50 years later, will go back to see where the points are. And always the points will never stay at one place. They always move away from each other. 
in an upward, upward and downward direction. So the points slide and pass each other. Now these plates are at a transform boundary. So basically they are slide and pass each other. So these plates will pull up and down until one day it will release and come back. And that's when the major earthquakes happen, right? So the forces that are pulling them away is like a rubber band. You pull the rubber band open and it holds there for a while until the force and energy gives up and then it releases. And then you, you either get sting, right? Think about it like that. So now, let's say Mother Nature is holding two big plates and pulling them and sliding them away, up, sliding past each other. And one issue is going to release it. And when it releases, the major earthquakes happen. So let's go back to the whiteboard now and take a note for transform or passive plate boundary. So passive plate boundaries is also called transform plate boundaries, right? So it's always good to know the different terms. So here we have two plates. Let's try the opposite direction. So here we have two plates. And these two plates are now These two plates are sliding past each other. So where one is going up, one is coming down, right? And in the middle here now, we have what is called the big wood that happens in passive or transform plate boundaries, friction, right? So let's take the note. So these are, Passive or transform plate boundaries. And passive or transform plate boundaries are these boundaries. The plates slide past each other, creating a friction movement. And this can eventually release. Right? It is not a destructive one, it's not a constructive one. It just simply slides and pass. And you'll think it's not that destructive because they tend to be passive. But the fact that they are sliding, I mean, two landmass grating upon each other is going to cause trouble, right? Example of this the San Andreas. Fault, where the North American plate is sliding alongside the Eurasian plate. Okay, so it's always good to have examples and, and in situations like these. So ensure to learn them, please. Okay, so we repeat this. Passive or transform plate boundaries are where two plates slide past each other, creating a friction movement, and this can eventually release. Example of this is the San Andreas Fault, where the North American plate is sliding alongside the Eurasian plate. Continuing now, we have now hotspots being formed. So the Hawaiian islands do not occur by a plate boundary. These islands are formed as the Pacific plate move over a hotspot in the mantle. And a hotspot is a fixed spot below in the mantle where magma rises, right? So here we have the different Hawaiian islands and some Caribbean islands are formed like this too. So the hotspot is located in one fixed point here. When it erupts, Magma is ejected into earth, onto the Earth's surface and it solidifies as large islands, right? These large islands, as the plate slides, it moves. And then it moves over from over the hotspot now and is in a more settled land, so it's habitable, right? As the, it erupts again, it moves. And this is how the islands form. This is not a day-to-day -day process. This is hundreds of years process we're talking about here, right? So the oldest island 
of Hawaii is Taui, right? And then Maui is the, one of the youngest islands. And Hawaii is one of the youngest islands as well, right? So this is the Hawaiian ridge. So this is something that happened by passive plate boundaries when two plates slide past each other. The Caribbean is another example of hotspots. So those small islands in the upper Antilles, greater Antilles then, they are formed from hotspots, right? So, and the evidence for this is because they have volcanic remnants. So the rocks are volcanic in nature. And there are islands in the Caribbean, Grenada, Grenada, which is not too far from Trinidad and Tobago. There is an underwater volcano known as Kekam Jenny. Now, when Kekam Jenny erupts, Grenada gets a new piece of land all the time, right? Montserrat is an, is an island in the Caribbean. It's not an independent state. It's not really habitable right now because the last eruption completely wiped out the island and people had to move. They migrated. So this was the end of the slides with the types of plate boundaries. And I will post a handout to supplement this. So I want you to pay attention, pause the video, make your notes, and then read the handouts, okay? This is very important. And we will talk about more about hotspots as we do volcanoes, because this is part of volcanoes but it must be mentioned because it happened at the strict slip or transform or passive play boundary. So thank you for watching this video tutorial. I hope it was informative and you understand the concepts being taught. Please pause the video and make your notes. And when you are done, read the handout and complete all the questions that I'm asking. So thank you.